Hey, it's Tanvi and welcome back to my channel. Today we are doing another episode of Kitchen Tracks, which is a series on my channel where I try to make a dish from every country in the world. Normally it's one that I've never had before, but this time we're making one of my absolute favorite things in the world that I had on my trip to Portugal called bacalao com natas. And I'm like, 100% positive that I'm not saying that correctly, but basically it translates to codfish with cream. When I first saw codfish and cream or codfish with cream, I was so intrigued. I was like, what is that? I want that. So I got some and my first ever time trying bacalao com natas was in Porto. And I've, <laughs> I've never had anything more delicious. That's like, my favorite thing I had in Portugal and I ordered it every single chance that I got like I obviously had to take a few breaks here and there because it's a super hearty and like savory dish it's kind of heavy because there's obviously cream in it and cheese and potatoes and onions but it's just so good if I had to compare it to something else I feel like it would be kind of like lasagna without pasta and with fish instead. Or it would be kind of like a fish pie of sorts. It's actually nothing like lasagna because there's no like marinara sauce. So I don't know why I said that, but you know how you feel after you have lasagna? Like you feel really full, like you really ate like the most delicious meal. That's how, that's how you're gonna feel after you have this. So let's get started. So to start, we're going to get our codfish and for my recipe, I am making enough for four people. But like, it's like two people because like, you're gonna want to eat all of it. Do you know what I mean? But yeah, we're gonna start off with around a pound of codfish. We're gonna take one and a half cups of milk. I'm using whole milk. We're gonna bring it to a boil. And then we are gonna cook our codfish in this milk for around 10 minutes. I'm trying to fully submerge the codfish so it cooks evenly. And I'm gonna let this cook for around 10 minutes in total because codfish cooks pretty fast. Ever so often, I'm just gonna make sure that the cod is like still submerged because sometimes when the milk is boiling, it will move it around and parts of it will stick out and we don't want that. We want it to be cooked. So it's been 10 minutes, so I'm gonna turn off the heat. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna save this milk and we're gonna take out the fish. So I have this bowl. And I'm just gonna take the fish and, oh, it's already breaking, obviously, cause it's cooked. So it's very tender and it's gonna break with a fork. But I'm gonna try to fish out Wow, I did not mean to do that. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna try to fish out the fish um, from this milk because what we wanna do next is we want to shred the fish. You can either cut it or shred it into smaller pieces. So I've taken out all the fish and now I'm gonna let this cool before I cut it into small pieces. And I'm gonna work on my onions and potatoes. While the fish is cooking, I am gonna go ahead and mince this onion. I keep tearing up because I cannot cut onions. <laughs> Now that we're done cutting the onions, we are gonna go ahead and like fry them up in some vegetable oil. So I know I said vegetable oil a second ago, but actually we're gonna use around a tablespoon of olive oil. And we're gonna heat this up until the oil is pretty hot. And then we're gonna add in our onions and let them cook down a bit for about five minutes.
while the onions are like frying up, I am going to take a fork and start shredding the cod into like smaller pieces. This is what I'm going to leave my cod at. So there's some bigger pieces and there's some smaller pieces. That way, mm, that way, when you're eating this codfish and cream, you know you're eating fish. After we shred the fish up into smaller pieces, we're gonna work on our potatoes. So I'm using two, you wanna use around a pound of potatoes and we're gonna peel them and then dice them. I'm gonna throw this away. Now that the potatoes are mostly peeled, I know that there is a little bit of skin left, but let's just pretend we don't see that, okay? Let's just pretend. I am gonna go ahead and small dice this. Now that we're done cutting the potatoes, we're gonna make our bechamel-like sauce. So, sorry, that is the ice maker. It randomly makes noises and I can't control it. I don't know why, but basically, it's not a true bechamel sauce because true bechamel is consisting of like white roux and also flour. But in our sauce, we are going to be using flour and milk instead of flour, milk and butter. But long story short, we are basically going to be adding one and a half tablespoons of flour into our heated milk. And we're going to stir it up and we're going to add in our codfish and our onions. And at the same time that we're making this sauce, we are going to fry up our potatoes. They don't have to be cooked completely through yet because we are gonna put this entire mixture into like a casserole dish into the oven for like 30 minutes. So it is gonna be cooked at the end, but we do want to start the cooking process on the potatoes. So let's go over to the stove. So I'm gonna go ahead and first add in my onions that have been kind of cooked. So I've put all of my onions into this milk. So now I'm gonna use the same exact pot or pan, I should say, or skillet, whatever you wanna call it, um, to heat up my potatoes. So again, I'm gonna add in around a tablespoon or half a tablespoon of olive oil and I'm gonna add in my potatoes. I'm just gonna coat them in as much oil as I possibly can and let them cook for around 10 minutes. So now let's focus on this bechamel-like sauce we're about to create. So I'm turning the heat on and I've already added the onions into the milk. So I'm gonna give it a mix. And at this point, I just want the milk to heat up again because it's kind of cooled down since I've cooked the fish in it. It's been a few minutes. Once the mixture starts heating up, I'm gonna go ahead and add in around one and a half tablespoons of flour. And we wanna stir this like really, really well because we do not want this to clump. So the mixture is starting to get thicker and thicker, which is good. So we are gonna go ahead and add in our cod. We wanna to try to get all of the cod that's stuck to the bowl because nothing is being wasted. And then we're gonna give it a mix. We're gonna let this incorporate for a couple minutes because we do want the mixture to keep getting thicker and thicker. So while you're waiting for this mixture to thicken up, you wanna go ahead and preheat your oven to 375. I would say that this is thicker than it was when it started out. So I'm gonna go ahead and add the potatoes. These potatoes are cooked pretty much. I wouldn't serve them at this point, but after we put them in the casserole dish and they cook in the oven, they're definitely gonna be cooked to perfection. So if you can put your fork through with minimal effort, you're good. That's when you wanna stop. So I cooked my potatoes for around 20 minutes. Once it's pretty combined, you wanna turn the heat off and you're gonna start assembling your casserole dish. So I brought over the mixed cod, potato, onion, and milk mixture. 
And I'm gonna go ahead and add some pepper because we haven't seasoned this yet. So we're gonna go ahead and do that right now. I'm adding around a few teaspoons of pepper. And then also since my codfish wasn't salted before, I'm gonna add in some salt to taste. And then some people like to add nutmeg. So I'm gonna add like a dash of nutmeg. At this point, you wanna give your mixture a taste. If it tastes good now, you're gonna be blown away by the end result. Now that we like the seasoning on our mixture, we are gonna take some butter and just grease our casserole dish. I don't know how large this dish is. Oh, I'm using a one and a half quart like casserole dish. So let's do it. And I'm gonna just like place everything down. This is the perfect size casserole dish. I was so worried. I was like, it's gonna be, this is clean. I just cleaned this before I made this dish. So don't judge me. I'm excited. I'm happy that this is like the perfect size casserole dish. But the last two things we need to do is add the cream, the codfish and cream, you know, you have to add cream. So I'm adding three fourths cup of cream. So in Portugal, they use fresh cream, but I could not obviously get my hands on that. That's not something you can buy at a normal grocery store in the States. So I'm just using heavy cream. And I'm gonna let this soak into it, into the bottom. On top of the cream, most people add cheese. They use a different type of cheese in Portugal that I couldn't get my hands on, unfortunately. So you can just use mozzarella or Parmesan. I'm just trying to cover the entire top of this with cheese. I wanna say if you're trying to like measure, that it will be around half a cup or a quarter of a cup of cheese, actually. This is for four people. Okay, that's good. That's perfect. We are gonna go ahead and put this in the oven for 30 minutes. Let's check up on it. <gasps> oh my God. <laughs> I don't even know if you can see it. I need to show this to you because here it is, bacalao con natas or codfish with cream. When I had this in Porto, it looked almost identical to this except for it was in a smaller like dish because it was for only one person. I'll put a picture right here of what it looked like, but it also had olives on it. I don't know if that's traditional or not, but they served it with olives on top, so that's what I'm gonna do. This is bringing me back. Like, this is really bringing me back. I can't wait to dig in. It's been five minutes, so I've let, I've let it like cool down. You definitely should let it cool down for longer than five minutes, but I can't do that. I'm too impatient. So here goes nothing. I'm gonna get myself literally perfect so <laughs> this looks exactly what i ate this looks like exactly what i ate is what i meant to say in portugal oh my god this looks too delicious i'm gonna put an olive on top to make myself feel fancy i need to give it a try i'm gonna make sure i get some fish this is gonna burn the roof of my mouth but i don't care No, it's actually like actually gonna burn. I mean, I don't really have a big vocabulary, but I still talk a lot. 
especially when I like something, but I'm speechless. Like this, this is, this tastes, I wanna say this tastes like identical to what I ate in Portugal. This tastes so good. You need to like run to the grocery store to make this. This is like dangerous. Why did I make this at home? Because this is not good for you, but I might make this like once every other month because it's so good. Like it's so delicious. But anyways, I, I need to let this cool down, but I hope you enjoyed this video. I really, really, really enjoyed making this dish and I enjoy making all types of cuisines at home. If you like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more videos like this one, as well as travel vlogs, hauls, and other lifestyle content. Thank you so much for watching. I am going to eat this. All of, not all of it. I'm not gonna eat all, I'm gonna share it because I would actually prob probably die if I ate all of it. But I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna go enjoy this meal, but thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.